What is up guys, this is Jay here, JMedia1, and we are back to talk about the iPad Mini. We did a review on this, and I will leave a link up here if you guys want to check that out. But today we're back to talk about some of the coolest features. If you see, I got a screen protector on here now, and I do have this plastic case. I just like the, the plastic rubberized cases because it just makes it simple. I didn't really want to put a case on this, but it does help it with some scratching and things like that. So I decided to go ahead and use a case. Uh, that being said, we're going to talk about just some of the coolest features here. So the star of the show is the bigger screen on the iPad, right? Um, but the coolest part about this is it's surrounded by these super small bezels. And if I turn it on, you can see the bezels here have gotten a lot smaller. Um, very, very small. Uh, the front of the device, is where you notice the biggest difference. I wish they were a little bit smaller, but I think doing that would significantly add to the cost of the device, so we're okay with that. Given that the base model is already 500 bucks for a mere 64 gigs of storage, I prefer the trade-off Apple made. The only other storage option is 256 gigs, which runs about $650, and the 5G version costs even more than that. The screen also isn't quite up to the quality you get in the iPad Pro models. It's a high enough resolution, but when scrolling in portrait, you can see just a little bit of a jelly effect where one side moves over slightly faster than the other. And I will demonstrate that for you right now. Um, we're just going to unlock this and open it up. And if you scroll, you can notice a little bit of that jelly effect happening uh, right there. So that's one of the bad things. There's a lot of good things, though. Um, it's a common thing that you see on a lot of screens. Um, you can test it on your own screen. It's usually not that noticeable because it often happens vertically instead of horizontally. When I use the iPad Mini in landscape, I don't see it. I don't think it's a big problem, but it's there. And I've asked for Apple to comment, and I will update if there is a reply. Probably not. I had an actual gripe about the screen. It would be that it doesn't have enough brightness. Even though it's comfortable to use outdoors in a bright sunlight, it's still a little bit tough. But the truth is, I don't have any real complaints. I love having the slightly bigger screen than the prior minis, and it looks extremely nice. Uh, the iPad mini has a single rear camera, like the iPad Air, and the, the rest of the redesign is what you'd expect. It supports the second generation Apple Pencil, which is super nice. You can attach it right to the side here and charge it magnetically. Um, Apple had to move the volume buttons over to a different spot, so they're here. Uh, but that's to accommodate that pencil. It also has improved cameras. The front facing one now supports center stage feature, which is really cool. It tracks you and keeps your face centered during video calls. Battery life's okay, it's not amazing. Unless I'm using a big iPad all day for work, like a work computer, it seems like it can last about a week between charging. Uh, the mini isn't quite that good. It's pushing it to get a full day of constant use, but lighter use does get me through a couple of days. No problem whatsoever. Apple ditched the home button with this generation, so the Touch ID sensor is located in the power button up here at the top. Uh, the squared off sides bring the mini in line with the iPad Pro design. It does have a very pro look. Uh, you unlock it by resting your finger up here on the Touch ID sensor and the power button, just like the iPad Air. The speakers are nice and loud. Uh, it uses a USB-C, which we love. Modern devices are all getting this. It's compatible with a lot more devices because of that. And iOS is starting to switch over to uh, this instead of the lightning port. It also lacks a headphone jack, which is um, not very surprising, but it's worth bringing up because it could keep some people from buying this device to hand off to a kid. Now you can get an adapter for this, and what you do is you plug the adapter in down here, and then it turns it from the Apple port to a headphone adapter, but that's just an extra cable that you're going to have uh, hanging off. Um, something that everybody just seems to have accepted, but is actually a genuine problem uh, that deserves some continued pressured support from multiple people, I think, 
is that they refuse iPads to allow uh, to support multiple user accounts outside of specific education settings or programs like that. I find it punitive. Not every family can afford or wants to buy an iPad for every person in the house, and sharing a device can be a real hassle. Tablets that run Android, Amazon Fire OS, Windows, and even Chrome OS support multiple user profiles. The fact that the otherwise the best line of tablets out there, the best, does not include that is crazy, right? You should be able to log into this with multiple users, no problem. I should be able to add my daughter, my son, my wife, and they can all log in, switch usernames, maybe touch on it with a different touch ID. On my iMac, it works like this, so it's definitely possible. If I go to my iMac and my wife is signed in, I click on my username and I use the Touch ID on the Magic Keyboard and boom, I'm in there. That's it. Uh, the other iPad OS concern is that with the Mini, Apple doesn't seem to have fully thought through what it means for it to be running on a smaller display. And what I mean by that is there are some places where the buttons or text are completely cut off in landscape mode. The keyboard is almost comically large and it hides too much of what you're trying to look at. And it's all too often that buttons and icons end up being so tiny that as Steve Jobs once joked, you sometimes feel like you need to sand your fingers down to tap them. Uh, the iPad mini can be in com comfortably held for a long period of time and it fits in your hand like this. So if you're reading a book or something like that, it is fantastic. It's great. Uh, that was a lot of complaints, but despite all of them, I dearly love the iPad Mini, and I've gone so far as to replace my iPad Pro with one for a daily driver. If anybody asked me if they should do the same, I would probably say yes, maybe. Instead, I would respond with another question. Do you know exactly why you want to have a smaller iPad instead of a big phone or a full-size iPad? Because the iPad Mini is not very good at the things that those are good at and it's only really better than those things in a few specific ways I just happen to care a lot about one of them there are specific niche use cases for an iPad mini if you do computing work in the field and you need something more comfortable to the iPad uh, there's a lot of people that have to use these for maybe let's just say like a service drive purpose like if you ever go to a Chick-fil-A Chick-fil-A users have um, iPads or, or some kind of tablet that they're using. So if you're taking orders or something like that with this every day, fantastic. If you're taking notes on this, if you're at work and you take a ton of notes at work, this is fantastic. And it does make a ton of sense. But maybe more so now that it works with the USB-C accessories, it makes even better sense. Apple's marketing around using pilots instead of this fluff either is a genuine, useful, and much used device in small aircraft. And they do pinpoint that. The iPad mini is worse than the larger iPads for a lot of things people want to use iPads for. Uh, the screen is smaller for videos, and it's too cramped for multitasking when you're doing a lot of work. It's more expensive than the base $329 iPad, which was also recently refreshed. It doesn't have a smart connector for keyboards, which means that <coughs> you're on your own to find one. you got a Bluetooth keyboard uh, that you like. And aside from that, um, it would have been really nice if they would have made a... a Apple keyboard like the Magic Keyboard specifically designed for this model because if you were to shrink it down to this base size I think it would be still fantastic and it wouldn't be too small. Um, you know portable Bluetooth keyboards a lot of them are just crap they're terrible um, so we would love to see something like that somebody make a really great Bluetooth keyboard. Uh, the best thing about the iPad mini is that it's a great device just for the evening when you're puttering around the house and you know content consumption things like that yeah of course but a big part of it is you can do some work on this and it's constraining enough but not too much so the new Apple iPad mini definitely a go um, I do like it I can do all the multitasking and tricks as the big iPad can do but the most of the time I end up using uh, using it like a giant phone. I like it better than a giant phone because the screen is even bigger still than that of that device and I can do more things than I can do on my phone but I can't do what I can do on my Pro. 
So uh, the iPhone Pro Max, of course, I don't use it. I don't need something that big, so this kind of fits perfectly. Um, and the reason why I say that is the, the phone, for what I use a phone for, is to talk on it, to text on it, simple things. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time consuming content on a phone and things like that. When I use a phone, it's for a phone's purpose. When I pull out the iPad mini, I use it to do some work. I use it for some content consumption, things like that. When I use the iPad Pro, I'm doing work. I'm you know, doing some photo editing, things like that. If I switch to my Mac, it's because I'm doing video editing. So everything kind of has its purpose. And I think Steve Jobs recognized that, right? That's why the iPad is not the, the Mac. It can be a computer if you hook it up to a keyboard and a mouse, but it can't do what a computer can still do. And so I think Steve Jobs realized that. Um, so... The best thing that I could say is that I could physically hold it further away from my eyes, which as the human body in the real world opens me up more than a phone does, I'm not hunched over in a one-on-one -on -one with a screen, nor am I fully immersed in something bigger. It's an in-between. And as such, it means I'm simply more approachable to the people around me, to talk to, to look up, to stand up, to wander over to the kitchen like a bigger phone. It's a device that requires more attentionality to use than a phone. The iPad is not just a small iPad. Even though the change in the screen size doesn't change how the software works to the detriment, it does change how you use the software. And that's why it's great for me. And it's why my advice to anybody considering this is to think about whether or not it would be truly great for them because there's a lot of different options out there. But I can tell you one thing, when it comes to tablets, Apple does it best, hands down, across the board. There, I've used several different types of tablets over the years, and Apple just does it. So if you guys got something from this video, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so that we can talk about some more things tech, right? That's what we're here for. And we will see you guys next time. Later, guys.